Hey everyone, welcome back to Railway after what's been quite a long hiatus. I wanted to start the new year with a blank slate, so this is the new map I'll be using for this series. This shore area here is something I'm envisioning as a mixed port and rail terminal. And you can see that there's already a railway line in place that's coming past where that port will be, around that peninsula, and then along the waterfront here next to this main road. Immediately I thought, well, this riverfront is an area that I want to develop in future. I want to kind of see it as the main area of my city. And a freight line across the front of that isn't particularly attractive. I also thought that this was a great opportunity to bring in some provision for passenger rail, given the proximity to the central area. This line here comes from that area I'm envisaging as a port, along this stretch of waterfront, under this bridge, and then disappears off down into the valley between the mountains. When I looked at this, it did remind me of something here in London, the Victoria Embankment, which was also known as the Thames Embankment when it was constructed in the 1860s. For those unfamiliar with it, the embankment is an area of reclaimed land which now includes new green space, a boulevard, a railway line, and its main purpose, a sewer. The reclaimed area is quite large. I've marked on this map where the York Watergate was originally, which shows the extent of the original course of the river. These drawings are from the 1860s and 70s and show you a cutaway of how both the sewer and the railway were placed beneath the newly embanked land near Charing Cross Station. The way that this was built is literally by erecting cofferdams, draining the water and adding soil into the space to create land that wasn't there before. To construct the railway, they then reinforced the trench and covered it over, almost like traditional cut and cover tunnelling but without quite so much cutting. History lesson over, let's get back to the game. You'll see me removing the existing railway lines as I'll be rebuilding it using Network Multi-Tool to make this super easy. Start by choosing your track. I've gone for something from Railway 2 and use the parallel mode in Network Multi-Tool. Select the start and end nodes you want to build next to but keep in mind that there is a limit to this. So go as far as you can and repeat the process if you want or need to. Here you can see me lining up the track both vertically and horizontally. I want those catenary support wires to be just under the surface of the pavement so that they don't clip through when I build the next stage. As mentioned earlier, I wanted to do both freight and passenger rail here. So I'm gonna duplicate the line that I've just built. To get the best water effects for your new embankment, make sure that you terraform the land beside your new tracks to ensure a clean transition between the walls and the water. Now we repeat the process with Network Multi-Tool to build the interior retaining wall. I'm carefully adjusting the height here as I want to get this just below the height of the pavement on the road so it doesn't clip through the surface I'll be adding soon. Once that's done, I bring it forward enough to cover the edge of the terrain mesh of the road. As long as you don't clip through the catenary masts and your curves aren't too sharp, you won't have any issues with trains hitting these walls. Now we're going to create the outer wall using the same process. Pick your retaining wall and use Network Multi-Tool to bring it right up against those outside catenary masts. Finally, we'll use the Pavement Surface Networks by 9U to place the lid. You could also use a road or another type of surface here. Feel free to experiment, but you might need to tweak the wall positions. These 16 meter service networks aren't quite wide enough to cover up the whole gap. So for the first one, go all the way out to the edge and place the second one slightly closer to the road. Off camera, I created a bit more of the embankment down around the peninsula that you saw earlier, which later on, I'll be turning into a park just like London's embankment gardens. But this area here is where I'm going to be adding a station. Not too dissimilar, to embankment or temple stations which you saw earlier on Google Earth. So keep an eye out for the next episode and I'll show you how you can add a fully functional underground station into your newly created embankment.
So now, rather than a somewhat unsightly freight line across our city's future waterfront, we've now got a fully embanked quad track railway. One line for passengers and one line for freight. I hope this has been helpful for you. Any feedback, thoughts or requests, as always, do let me know.